Hello and welcome to A Word for Today. My name is Brent Shias. Today's episode is entitled The Shepherd and the Sheep, and this title immediately prompts us to think of one of the most quoted and possibly best-known chapters in the Bible, Psalm 23, which of course begins with the words, The Lord is my shepherd, and if he is our shepherd, I shall not want, meaning I am not lacking anything. I am cared for, loved, guided, protected. No wonder this passage is so beloved. Ah, I'm so excited and anxious to hear today's lesson into God's Word. I can't wait to see what the Lord has in store for us. So without further delay, let me introduce you to Pastor Stefan Chauvet and Marcy Selman and get ready for this wonderful message on A Word for Today. Good evening, my name is Marcy Selman. Once again, it is such a delight to welcome you to A Word for Today. I have personally known Pastor Stefan Chauvet for over 30 years, and I can assure you, he is a true servant of the Almighty, a dedicated man. Heaven has gifted this exceptional pastor with many talents, and in everything he puts his hand to, he does it with a spirit of excellence. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce you to my pastor and my dear friend, Pastor Stefan Chauvet. Good evening, Pastor Stefan. Good evening, Marcy. Praise the Lord. Here we are together again. It's always a pleasure. Amen. And so the beloved Psalm 23 starts off with the description of our Jesus, the Lord. Classic. Yes, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. And so we have a heavenly shepherd, but do we also need a pastor here as well? Absolutely. I guess the question just, you know, <laughs> is answered right away. Pastors means shepherd. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. uh, of course, Psalm 23, written by King David, mm. speaking of the fact that the Lord is my shepherd. But King David was a shepherd before he was a king. That's true. Mm -hmm. And if you look back in the Old Testament scriptures, you'll find out Moses was a shepherd, mm -hmm. right? Sure. David was a shepherd. Abraham was a shepherd. That's right. Isaac was a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Jacob was a shepherd. Mm -hmm. They were all shepherds. Long line of shepherds. So they knew how to evaluate God's character based on their daily duties. Mm. Then Jesus comes in the New Testament and he deals with fishermen. Mm. And he tells them, go and take care and go and save some souls. Right. Throw the net. Right. So the Lord deals according to what kind of work we have to do. David was able to say, the Lord is my shepherd yes. because he was a shepherd himself. Right. Now, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, mm -hmm. The great apostle Paul states that Jesus gave a gift to the church. Okay. Then he goes on and explains. He gave apostles, he gave prophets, mm -hmm. he gave evangelists, he gave pastors, and he gave teachers. Right. Now, the duty of the pastor is one of the most important duty in the, in the body of Christ. Okay. He is a shepherd of a flock, mm -hmm. right? And why is this important that you have a shepherd? It's right. very easy. You can have a, an evangelist visiting your, your church. You can have a sure. teacher visiting your church. You sure. can have an apostle visiting your church. Mm -hmm. But the pastor stays day in, day out with the church. That's While right. the visitor comes, preach on a Sunday, he then leaves town, <laughs> the pastor stays with the congregation, just like a good shepherd would stay with his flock in the wilderness. Right. What's amazing also is when Jesus was born, the angels rejoiced. And who did they go to to say, come and see, That's come right. and see who was born in Bethlehem. Right. And scripture says, and the shepherds in the field were invited to come and see Jesus. Mm -hmm. That was before the wise men 
right? That's true. So the mm. shepherds were the first to mm -hmm. see Jesus because the Lord loves shepherds. Yeah. It's amazing also that in the book of Genesis, the scripture says, but the Egyptians despise the shepherds. Mm. And we know that in the Old Testament scriptures, Egyptians are a parallel for the world. Okay. So guess what? The world despises shepherds as they were despised in the Old Testament. So then speaking of shepherds, what would be their main responsibilities, you would say? Well, the scripture, if you want to keep going on Psalm 23, says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. I've said that over the years. This is not, you know, very complex. The rod and the staff are the tools used by a shepherd. Mm -hmm. A staff is a crooked instrument mm -hmm. that is able to hold the neck of the sheep or specifically rescue the sheep from a ravine, right? right? Mm -hmm. So the Lord is my shepherd. When I'm in trouble with his staff, he pulls me out of it, mm -hmm. right? That's beautiful. With yeah. the staff, thy rod and thy staff come for me. Well, the rod is a, is a club in a sense, okay. and the shepherd hits the hind legs of the sheep mm -hmm. so he can, you know, Follow the lines. Right. Don't go left and right. There's wolves over there. Mm. There's, you know, there's predators. Right. So the club is to correct the sheep. Okay. So the scripture says, thy rod, your rod mm -hmm. and your staff, they comfort me. Yeah. So basically the Lord is saying, David is saying mm -hmm. through scriptures, he says, I find comfort in the fact that you correct me mm. and you direct me. Mm. Right? Yes. Rod, staff, you correct me, you direct me. Now listen to this. Mm -hmm. In the event that you refuse God's instructions, okay. then you will have to deal with God's correction. Oh, it's a natural consequence. In the event that you mm -hmm. refuse to follow the staff, which leads you in the right direction, mm -hmm. you will have to deal with the club that is the rod of mm -hmm. God's correction. Oh and that is the duty of a shepherd, not only to give direction, okay. but also to correct. Mm -hmm. And the Apostle Paul very clearly states that, to reprove and to correct the church. Okay. So that's the duty of the shepherd as fa our father, heavenly father is our shepherd. Okay. So then we have a picture, obviously, as we said, the Psalm 23 of the good shepherd. Yes. So how do you know when you don't have a good shepherd? What are some of the telltale signs? Very simple. The good shepherd will tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. Mm. That's very important That's because yeah. the whole meadow, the whole prairie, the whole panorama mm -hmm. in the spiritual realm is filled with hirelings. That's right. People who are doing the job as a paycheck and they just go through the motion. Mm -hmm. But because, you know, they want to please the crowd, they tell you what you want to hear. Right. But a good shepherd, hello, will tell you what you need to hear. Mm. And that is a big difference. That's why Jesus clearly explains that those are shepherds that will even give their lives for the sheep. Yes. But the other one is a hireling. He sees the enemy, he just leads down, change congregation, too much complicated, I change down. Hmm. Well, the shepherd in the scriptures, uh, we see the shepherd is always with the sheep, stays day in, day out. Right. There is a teaching that I gave and I, I did not originate that teaching, of course, mm -hmm. but the fact that each of the fivefold ministries related to the fingers of the human hand, mm -hmm. Right? And lo and behold, the wedding ring is the comparison, is the similitude with the pastor right. because he's married to the church. Mm. He stays with it. Right. And he doesn't tell you what you always want to hear from the pulpit. Right. A good shepherd will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Okay. Well, that's good to keep that in mind, not just go for externals. Sometimes. Not go through the motion. Yes, exactly. So then we have an idea of the responsibilities of the shepherd, but what are the responsibilities for us as sheep? Well, the sheep, if you go in the animal kingdom, is one of the least intelligent animal. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sadly, oh right? Hmm. Uh, if you go to New Zealand, New Zealand has uh, one of the highest pro ratio of sheep versus humans. Okay. There's more sheep than are humans in New hmm. Zealand. So okay. a lot of studies have been made in New Zealand concerning how the shepherd is able to uh, call his flock and they would obey him. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're talking a simple whistle and the sheep know and bang, they follow him. Okay. That's a good shepherd, mm. right? If you and I would go in the, in, the, in the field in New Zealand and call that flock, they're not going to respond to you because you're not the shepherd. Right. I'm not the shepherd. Mm -hmm. But Jesus says in John 10, 27, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. They hear it and they follow me. Right. So the simplicity of obeying Jesus as sheep, mm -hmm. we are sheep of, uh, of God's you know, flock, so we have to obey his voice and a good sheep obeys what the Lord commands us to do. Right. And 
we can't differentiate. The stranger calling us, we're not going to obey. We're going to obey what the Lord says. Amen. And so I, I just as you were saying that, I was thinking of a sketch you had done at church for one of the sermons, and I know it's a bit hard to describe, but at, as far well, as we'll the perspective... Put it on, we'll put it on the screen. Okay, great. So they can see Wonderful. It. So you're talking about the importance of the perspective of the shepherd versus the sheep. Can you just explain that a little bit well, for our viewers? Well, physically speaking, a sheep is on four legs, right? Right. While the shepherd is on two legs. Mm -hmm. So spiritually speaking, even in the natural, the sheep has a limited vision. Right. Because it's about, you know, three feet high. Mm -hmm. It can see so much in distance. Okay. The shepherd is twice as tall. The shepherd can see further away. Mm. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So the shepherd, a godly shepherd, is called to know and to hear what the Lord is saying, to see ahead of time. Okay so that he can take care of his sheep to lead them into proper nourishment. Right. You know, he leads me to green pastures. pastures yes. Okay. But now put it in, in the imagery of God is the great shepherd. Now God is the great, great shepherd. shepherd. Mm -hmm. He sees all things. Yeah. As a minister, as a shepherd, I am God's sheep as well. Right. But when I take care of my congregation, it is my duty to hear from God mm -hmm. so I can tell the flock of the Lord, this is the direction we're taking. I cannot blame anyone. That's my duty to do so. Yeah. Because the shepherd is called to look ahead and to lead his flock to green meadows. Mm -hmm. That's my duty. Yeah. And if I see the enemy coming from left or right, it is the shepherd who will use his rod mm. you know, to get away with the enemy and yeah. to make sure the discipline is applied. Or the staff to make sure that there's no sheep that's, you know, fallen down or injured right. by the, with the staff to retrieve them from trouble. Right. So all these imageries, you know, the rod, the staff, the shepherd, the height, the distance, the meadow, all of these are linked to God is our great shepherd mm -hmm. and he gives us a natural shepherd, right. a pastor mm -hmm. in this world to take care of us as spiritual sheep. Yeah. So we really need to see our pastor as a gift from the Lord. But that's why Paul says in yeah. Ephesians 4 that Jesus gave gift yes. and among them, the shepherd, the pastor is a gift. Amen. And so speaking of obviously, obviously following our pastor as you're led by the Lord, how, why is it so important to follow the conviction and the leading of the Holy Spirit? Well, the shepherd is limited in knowledge as much as the sheep. But just as God instructed Moses for the people of Israel mm -hmm. what to do, God instructs the shepherd for his church, for the ministry, what to do. Mm -hmm. Now, you need to have an anointed shepherd. Right. You know, and someone would say, well, how do you know? Just listen to the preaching. Mm, okay. Are you fed every week? Right. Is the anointing of God flowing every week from his mouth? Right. Are you nourished? Are you challenged? Mm. Are you corrected, reproved, yet in love? Mm. If that's so, then yes, there's flaws. Every man has flaws. Right. Every minister has flaws. But if you see that the Lord is using this, this mm. vessel, then you can say, okay, I'm, I'm going to remove my foot from the brakes. I'm going to surrender to the Holy Spirit and I'm going to receive my pastor as a gift from God. Mm -hmm. If he is a godly pastor, right, mm -hmm. then I w the Lord's blessings will be open over you. Right. He will bless you because the Bible does say if you receive the word that is shared, not as coming from men, mm -hmm. but from God, then the scripture says, then the word will work in your life. Mm. And that is important. Yes. We have to be able to say, the teaching that I'm receiving from this submitted vessel that I believe, my shepherd, mm -hmm. then I can say the Lord is using him to speak to me as a sheep. Mm -hmm. He will lead me into green pastures as the Lord would lead us the same way. Right. So you have to accept this pastor, uh, not only in time of benefits, but also in time of correction. Mm. And it's a very important. Like I said, the pastor will not tell you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you what you need to hear. Right. Especially not to only wait, like you said, during good times, but when we are going through difficulties to come to the pastor and discuss these things, which obviously brings to the next point, which is why it's so important then to have a transparent relationship with our pastor. Why do you think that's so important? Well, now I'm going to say something that's going to shock all our listeners. I know. I know. It. Okay. This one is going to be like Fasten our seat ballpark, <laughs> bang, home run. The way you treat your pastor, if he's a man of God, mm -hmm. a godly man, right. not, not a charlatan. Right. If you have a godly pastor, mm -hmm. the way you treat him, it's parallel the way you treat God. Ooh. The way you treat your pastor is a symbolism of a synonymous of how you treat God. If you disrespect him, that means you disrespect God. 
Mm. Now, if someone tells me, well, he does this and he does that and he's terrible, well, then let him not be your pastor. Right. <laughs> Find a good man, a place where the Lord would lead you, mm -hmm. a place where you'll be safe spiritually, educated. Right. Right? But if he is a godly vessel, then the scripture in, in between the lines mm -hmm. tells you, hey, the way you treat your leader is the way you treat the Lord. Because God tells us in Romans 13, there's no government that exists on earth, mm -hmm. including your pastor, right. that the Lord has not, first of all, pre-approved. Mm. No one calls himself to be a pastor. Right. It is the Lord who calls men to be shepherds. That's right. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but he gives them a heart. He gave me a heart mm -hmm. for his people. Yes, he has. Mm -hmm. The Lord has said in the scripture, he says, and I will give you shepherds after my own heart. Mm. That's God who said this. I will give you shepherds. Mm -hmm. It's not because, you know, it's a career move. Right. It's God who established these men. He raises them up. He corrects them. He teaches them. He gives them an anointing. He gives them the ability, the wisdom, listening here. Mm -hmm. And once this man is equipped, he gives them a congregation to take care of, to nourish them, to be there in good times, bad times. Right. right? And to lead the flock, not to steer the flock. Mm, what do you mean by that? Well, I can preach for 10 years. If people don't listen, there's nothing I can do. Mm. I can lead people and if they follow, then we can go into green pastures. Like I've said before, mm. I cannot be the pastor of a person who does not accept me as a pastor. Yeah, that's true. And if we have our a minister, a shepherd, we must accept him and accept the fact that he's going to lead us. But if the people don't obey, I cannot take people by the neck and then grab them and push them in one direction. Mm -hmm. I'm not called to do this. This is not a tyrannical position. Right. You lead the flock to the water, mm -hmm. to the green pastures. Right. If they don't, there's nothing you can do. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, some more than 100 years ago, there was a fellow named Louis Pasteur. Okay. You know, he discovered the fact that if you boil milk, mm -hmm. it would remove all the bacterias. Okay. And then you could drink it. Mm. So we call that, based on his name, pasteurisé, pasteurized milk. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's the same name as minister, pasteur. Yeah, it's so true. I tell my congregation <laughs> quite often, mm -hmm. you need to be pasteurized, <laughs> as in pastor, yeah. not as in Louis Pasteur okay. and, and remove the bacteria. Right. But it's true, you mm -hmm. need to be pasteurized right. because when the, the pressure and the, the fire of the Holy Ghost gets involved in your life, mm. it burns a bacteria in the spirit. Mm, that is excellent. In the book of Acts, we see Paul taking some branches. You've mm. heard me share that often. Yes. And as soon as he took those branches, mm. those sticks, he put them in the fire. And because of the heat, out of those sticks came a snake. Mm -hmm. He didn't know. They, they looked like branches, right? right? But mm -hmm. in the fire, those who looked like branches, well, there was actually a snake mm -hmm. and hey, the snake came out. Mm -hmm. So as it is in the spirit. Okay. When the pastor puts the congregation on the fire, in the fire of God's word, mm -hmm. the devil cannot take it. He has to come out. He has mm -hmm. to be revealed. He has to be pastorized. <laughs> you put the milk you boil it, you, you cook it, basically, you eat it up, mm -hmm. bacteria and flame disappear. And once it's cooled down, you can drink that milk without any problem. Right. So as it is, the pastor puts the congregation into the fire of God's word mm. and the snake cannot take it. It is revealed. Can't take the heat. It cannot take the heat. Yeah. How many times you've heard me say over the years, I have to increase the spiritual temperature. Yes. And by oh, yes. increasing the spiritual temperature, the enemy cannot take it. The sheep can. Mm -hmm but the snake can't. That's an important distinction. That's very yeah. important. That's mm -hmm. why I say the shepherd must tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. So that the fire will reveal who's not with the right motives. Mm. Those who are there for wrong motives. See, in the animal kingdom, in the scriptures, we have different animals that are rep representative, right? right? So we have the sheep who mm -hmm. speaks of obedient Christians. Okay. We have the goats who speaks of Christians that are backsliding. Okay. And we have the wolves that Jesus says, sometimes you can have a sheep in sheep's, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Right. And, and the wolves is basically the enemy, agents of the enemy to come to steal and destroy. Mm -hmm. Jesus tells us in the last days, I will separate on my right, the sheep and on the left, the goats. Okay. Right? There's mm -hmm. an animal kingdom in the scriptures, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But as far as the wolves are concerned, lo and behold, back in the days of Jesus, mm -hmm. 
uh, we have discovered that wolves were actually white. Oh, okay. Some translation called it Lucas, which means white. Lucia, mm. Luciol, okay. which means light. Okay. Lou, Lou. Mm. In French, we say a Lou, a wolf, right. which means white. Mm. So from a distance, a wolf would be white. So if you look at the prairies, the meadows, you look at the mountain hills, the mountain sides, mm -hmm. you can't tell if it's a wolf or a sheep. From a distance, that's It's true. a white animal of the same size. The wolf and sheep are basically the same size. Mm -hmm. You just see a white spot, mm. a white patch. Right. But here's the difference. The sheep sticks together. Okay. The wolf, they are just on the side and they go on the peripheries and they wait for an injured sheep. Okay. The shepherd knows that. Mm. That's why with his rod and his staff, he protects the flock mm. and he checks if there is any problem. Now, it's very, very easy. See, the, the sheepfold stays together right. as a good congregation mm -hmm. and the goat stays on the peripheries. Goats are very simple to identify. They're here for the blessing, but they don't want the authority. Oh, goats are very okay. smart, right? Mm. They know the shepherd will lead people to grass, right? Good stuff to eat. Mm -hmm. So the, sh the, 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 the goats will follow the flock at a distance because they want the grass, but they don't want the shepherd to tell them what to do. Ooh. He that had near, let him hear. Yeah. While mm. right over there on the mountainsides, you have the wolves. The okay. wolves are waiting to see an injured sheep. Mm. Listen, have you, do you know that wolves, will often injure an animal and leave it there, injured. Why? So that while this injured sheep will complain, cry, mm. it will attract more sheep mm. to come and see what's happening okay. and the wolves have a bigger feast. So wolves will have wounded souls oh, yes. and leave them wounded so that the wolves can come back and have more spectators, more mm. food. That's why you need a good shepherd, because mm. the shepherd comes with a club and with his staff and he ran, hit those wolves to get away from the flock of God. Mm. That's why the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear. I shall not want. Mm. And then he says, now I'm going to give you shepherds after my own heart. Mm. They will protect you. They will feed you. They will warn you in advance. They will hear my counsel. They will share it with you. That's why we need a shepherd. Mm. That is profound. Oh, yeah, Truly it's a good profound. lesson. We need to learn this. Yes, absolutely. So, Pastor Ben, you had mentioned obviously the, the sort of the characteristics of a good shepherd. Yes. But for those that are not so great shepherds, is there also certainly a potential for abuse? Yes. Yeah. First of all, let's conclude this show in a very positive note. Mm -hmm. You will never be a good shepherd if you were not once a good sheep. Hmm. Okay. Learn that lesson and all our listeners should remember that. Mm -hmm. A good shepherd will never be a good shepherd if he was not first before mm -hmm. a good sheep. Like I said over the years, classic line, if you're too big to be led, then you're too small to lead. Mm. And when right. these ego maniacs come into a position of authority without having been changed, corrected, molded, polished, these people have no idea how to cope with this power, this authority, mm. this abuse. Yeah. And they take advantage of the flock of God. Okay. Now, I tell you, run. Run away from such shepherds that have never been good sheep. Yeah. I have been faithful to my pastor for, my pastor for decades. You know yes. that. Mm -hmm. I was not always a shepherd. Right. But I was a faithful sheep. Amen. Left and right. Mm -hmm. The Lord says in the book of Job, when I tell you you go right, you go right. Mm -hmm. Tell you go left, you go left. Right. I was able to assimilate my pride. You know, we all have pride mm -hmm. to tone down my will and to say, I am not my own. I belong to my Savior. Mm -hmm. If I can deal with my pride as a sheep, I will certainly be able to deal with my pride as a shepherd. Right. And knowing this, I will remember that I was a sheep. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I will treat the sheep of the Lord yes. the way I wanted to be treated myself. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's it gives you why a certain empathy. It gives you a right yeah. perspective. Hey, I was there. Yeah. So now I'm not going to be harsh with the sheep because I don't want people to be harsh with me while I was a sheep. Right. So a good shepherd yeah. was first. A good sheep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We Thank had a good day today. You. Yes, we did. Thank you so much, Pastor Fan, for those wonderful, wonderful insights from God's Word. It was my pleasure. Amen. So again, we thank Pastor Fan for these wonderful revelations in God's Word. I know I was truly blessed. Well, I hope that you enjoyed tonight's program as much as I did. Pastor Chauvet really made it abundantly clear 
from God's Word while we all need a godly shepherd to teach and guide us. Now, we invite you to join us next time for a wonderful episode of A Word for Today. Until then, this is Marcy Salmon wishing you a good evening, praying that the Lord blesses you and keeps you in Jesus' name. Whoa! Thank you, Pastor Stefan, for this wonderful message. This was truly an informative and fascinating time in the Word of God. You know, it never ceases to amaze me how Pastor Stefan can quote from the Bible hundreds of different verses without having any notes before him. It's truly a gift from above. Now, dear viewers, if you were touched by today's message by Pastor Stefan Chauvet, we invite you to take advantage of the wonderful books he has written by visiting the website awordfortoday.ca or calling the toll-free number on the screen. With the many titles like Now We Fight, The Trinity, Signs and Times, As He Is, Chinese Writing Wonders, and the very popular The Five Ways, there's a lot to choose from. In fact, today's episode was taken from the best-selling book titled The Five Ways. So we invite you to get your own copy today. Know that Pastor Chauvet's books are also available through Moriah Publications' website and Amazon as well as eBay. You know, over the years I have personally experienced God's blessings over my life as my wife and I have sown into this anointed ministry. That is why I speak with experience today by inviting you to give generously to this exceptional work of God. You will not regret it. In fact, why don't you become a partner with Pastor Chauvet? In return for your faithful contribution, you will receive Pastor Chauvet's wonderful books as well as a donation receipt for your kind generosity. See if the Lord will not open the windows of heaven for you. Well, thank you for joining us. That's all we have time for now. Hope you can join us again. Until then, may the Good Shepherd bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you. On behalf of Pastor Stefan Chauvet and Marcy Selman, good night everyone. And thank you again for joining us on A Word for Today.